Hey guys and welcome to Petroped, welcome to Saudi Arabia and welcome to the Dakar Rally. In fact today is classic Dakar just behind me. Oh, it looks like a Mitsubishi Pajero. I had a short wheelbase chassis actually. But so these are the classic Dakar cars coming past. We're here this weekend with Audi. That's absolutely wicked. We're here this weekend with Audi to experience and immerse ourselves in everything Dakar. We're going to get to be able to drive an adapted Q5. Today is all about classic Dakar, but then this evening we're going over to the Bivouac to have a look around the Team Audi garage and their incredible Dakar car. Hopefully get to meet some of the drivers and then tomorrow we're actually going to go and watch the final stage and the podium ceremony. This should be a good one. going to get some driving in so just off camera to my right is Thierry who has done was it 30 Dakar you say 30, 30 Dakar from mechanic navigator driver so I'm in very very good hands there's four adapted uh, Audi Q5s Joe's just next to me we've got Paul from Love Cars and Harry Metcalf uh, behind him so really cool and we're basically going to go out into the desert on a little loop just to get some kind of feeling for what it's like for the drivers in the Dakar and the kind of terrain that they're going to go through. So, very cool. We can go. Can we go? Turn right. He's going. <laughs> Turn right. Right more. Turn the large curve. Yeah. Left curve. Round that way. You, you cut, uh, cut, cut more. more yeah. More, more. Yeah. And more, more, more. Yeah. More, more, more. Yeah. And, and turn left now. Gas. Gas, 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 gas. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Good. Ah, yeah, yeah. And like this. Wicked. Like this. Absolutely cool. wicked. You can go speed here yes, if you want. Or no. Yeah, yeah, I'll go as fast as you let me. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the first thing, guys, when, when the guys in the Dakar, the, the speed that they're covering this kind of ground is unbelievable. There's a whole range of different types of vehicles from the Audi Qtron that we're here to kind of have a look at, but there's trucks and bikes and all kinds of things. But when when they're going across this kind of terrain, the 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 big thing that can catch them out is you go over a dune and you don't necessarily know what what's the other side. The other thing is they're navigating on a road book. So we had a, a, a bit of a briefing this morning on what that road book looks like. Um, and they basically go from waypoint to waypoint using a combination of navigation techniques. Um, and it's just a, an immensely complex challenge. I think the guys that really take it for me are the guys on the bikes because their road book is on a little roll of paper. Um, and they, they have to navigate whilst they're riding their bike along. Um, and they're just unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. I don't know, the, there's a, a British guy um, who, I think on the third stage, fell off his bike with 100 k's to go, thought he broke his collarbone, yeah. Continue. carried on, yeah. and then when he got there, he dislocated his collarbone, mm -hmm. and he still kept going. He's still, go, still in the rally. Wow. Every day, on a bike with a dislocated collarbone. Wow. <laughs> That's for sure. Speed okay? Yes, 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 no problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's great fun because you can just feel a car moving underneath us. Come on, dig in. <laughs> wow. I've got Joe behind me, he'll be trying to keep up. Okay, you see, now, we, now we're up to speed, it's just, you can kind of, oh, it's just fantastic to feel the car moving a little bit of oppo there. And 
and this is this is this kind of where the ground just drops away super easy to get caught out and end up over a really nasty rise this way yeah got to say this Q5 is dealing with this brilliantly Now I'm following tire tracks and clearly the guys in the Dakar, I guess you don't necessarily follow tire tracks because they might be going the wrong way. You follow your navigator, right? Yeah, and it, for sure, for it sure. just so happens that if the tire tracks are in the right way, yes. but it must be very easy to fall into the trap of following someone else's tracks. Yes, for sure, it's this way. Oh yeah? Yes, it's more easy to go out. Yeah. Go right. Yeah, and, and here. It's better. It's better. And then back up that way. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> so good. Bravo. It gives you Bravo. what's really great is it gives you a real appreciation of uh, that way yeah, of what the guys that we're going to see now yes. are doing, and I think that's really cool. Yes. Hang around. Yeah. Uh, do you want to come in a bit? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Not on the mark because now it's too soft. Wow. Well, good. Thierry, merci bien. Avec plaisir. Avec un grand plaisir. Well, merci. That that was good fun. <laughs> Short but sweet, but very very good fun. Probably Bravo. best put it in um, part. Right now, let's go and look at some classic Dakar cars. Looking forward to that. This isn't the plan. You come all the way to Saudi Arabia and it starts raining. <laughs> but this is quite a cool little area. We've got a little bivouac over there where we can go in and grab food and coffee and stuff. Now we've been up since, well, I think we left the hotel at six. I've been up since about quarter past four and it's uh, only quarter to 12 and I'm hanging already. So that's, I think, pretty much the classic uh, Dakar cars gone past. We're now gonna jump in some Jeeps. We're with a, basically a local Jeep owners uh, club and they're ferrying us all around. We've got a two hour transfer over to the bivouac um, to go and see the, if you like, the what I'm gonna call the proper rally cars, the contemporary ones that are racing in the actual Dakar. So that should be good fun. Anyway, I'm gonna go and grab some food, and maybe a coffee. So the e-tron's just arrived at the checkpoint, final checkpoint of the day. What an awesome looking thing. Just to see it for in the flesh is just incredible. Look at that. Just awesome, an absolutely awesome thing. It's like some kind of spaceship. Wowzers. <laughs> We've literally only just arrived at the bivouac. How cool is that, mate? It's so cool. <laughs> that is just the best thing ever. Yeah. Wicked. Oh, <laughs> we're getting we're getting ushered on. <laughs> I mean, just look at the size of that <laughs> truck and support view. It's just unbelievable experience. Here comes one of the quad bikers here. Look, to do a Dakar on a quad. What a hero! Right, let's head on into the bivouac area. This is just wicked. 
Uh, it's proper raining now. <laughs> oh, wow. This wasn't in the plan. Well, actually, it was completely predicted, but we're going to head on here and try and find some shelter because it's absolutely chucking it down. Wowzers. This, this is what a lot of rain in the desert does. It just turns the whole place into a complete quagmire. <laughs> just covered in it. It's absolutely minging. So yeah, hopefully over here somewhere, we've got the, if that is the mini. Boys, well, it's mini, let's come and have a look at these guys. Cars aren't back yet, damn. Wow, we've just attended a briefing in that truck, just talking about the RSQ e-tron. It's an absolutely incredible bit of engineering. Hopefully we'll get a chance to walk around the car in a little while. They're just literally, the, there's only one car left, unfortunately, out of the three. Uh, and it's, it's not long been back at service, so they've got all the bodywork off the back. And hopefully we'll be able to have a look under the skin. Phenomenal, phenomenal car. Basically, it's, a, it's, it's a, the ultimate hybrid, really. It is a, a full battery electric vehicle. It's got a 52 kilowatt hour battery. It's got two Formula E motors, one on each axle. And then it's got a German touring car, DTM, petrol TFSI engine that's basically running as a generator. So while it's driving along, the engine's running at a, a, a constant RPM, uh, charging the battery pack at, at 200 kilowatts. Um, and then the motors are drawing their power from the battery pack. So it's driving as an electric vehicle, but it's being charged constantly by a petrol engine. Really, really interesting. And, and uh, talking to the, the technical team, it's it's using less fuel than the equivalent Toyota, for example, the, the the class winning car. But yeah, really, really interesting. So this is pretty special access. So all the rear cowlings off. You can kind of see to the rear of the car. You can see the motor just in there, and then you just wander around, try and poke the camera in, and have a look on the inside. It's really compact in there. Got all the nav screens. Really, really interesting. And around the front, again, you've got the front axles. It's the, the articulation and suspension at the front of the car. And you can see the motor on that front axle. And walking all the way around here. Just an absolutely awesome thing. Now, before it goes dark, it's actually started to rain again. I had to come over and have a look at the minis, being a mini guy. This is about as far from a Mini as you could possibly get though. These things look absolutely awesome. It's gonna just pop the camera. This one's in service. What a thing. I mean, you just look at, what I love about these Dakar cars is the, the, the just the suspension and axle articulation, the, the shocks and the travel on the suspension. Look at that. Absolutely cool. Probably the only bit that's anything like a Mini Countryman is the headlamps at the back. <laughs> Amazing, absolutely amazing. Love the um, spare tyre storage just here. Morning guys, welcome to day two of the Dakar. We had a really late return to the hotel last night, very early start this morning. And we've made our way about two and a half hours from the hotel into the middle of the desert, on the water line, and we've got this really cool encampment set up. And the route for today's stage you can hear that is literally the second bike through, comes right along the water line here, past us. So we're gonna to get to watch the whole field come through here, be bikes first, then cars, and then probably at the back, the trucks. And then once we've seen all the vehicles come through here, we're gonna head off to the finish and see the cars finishing and see the podium ceremony. Really cool vantage point here though. So we wandered out away from the camp a bit to try and get a bit closer to the action. We think all the bikes have now gone through. We found out they actually started in reverse order from where they finished yesterday. There's a lot of helicopters in the air. 
we're pretty sure buggies are uh, and cars are close imminent imminent we can hear a buzz coming because we're next to this water and it's carrying across the water isn't it yeah. a noise so um, but we don't know <laughs> we're quite close but we're on a little rise here so we, we are as safe as i think we can be and as close as we can be but yeah can't wait for the cars to come through because i think they'll the bikes are quick the factory riders the difference between the guys that are just trying to get to the finish and the factory riders oh. are it's unbelievable um but three times the pace i reckon i can't believe that. i mean they, they literally stood up on the pegs for like two weeks yeah. basically in, in this in this position yeah it's like skiing for for two weeks yeah, I, <laughs> I thought you were doing something else then oh or yeah that <laughs> <laughs> right let's wait and see if we can get some cars coming through it's a clean channel joe yeah well you yeah but... <laughs> <laughs> First car through. Wow. I was like, I was standing here going, um, am I in the way? I don't know. Awesome. two guys outside the there yeah. oh, literally just wheeling the whole way oh, it was unbelievable oh, absolutely amazing yeah. how do they you would know this more than anyone harry how, how do they how do they stand like that for eight hours a oh, day they sit down they do sit down okay but the back when you as soon as you see a tricky section you're up on the pegs because okay. it's it's like skiing if you have more weight up high you can balance the bike and the bike can dance away underneath you and you're just steady and it will take you can just take it through you, and it's interesting there's this other line coming through here yeah yeah because yeah. yeah, yeah. they don't like mud I mean, if you go on dakar the last thing you expect is a welsh rally stage like that so yeah, they don't like it but the cards are all right yeah, yeah. we got now i think it's the toyotas isn't it because they sink oh, don't they absolutely absolutely amazing spotting for us with his super powerful binoculars and then down this way all the cars are coming we've got something very loud coming our way very soon Just one more. <laughs> yeah. We've taken literally five minutes to do about ten steps. Yeah. Well, not even. Probably. Every time we go back, because we've not, I've not drunk anything for like two hours. We go back, and we're like, oh, oh, oh no, there's another one coming. Yeah. Just like, what? What an experience. Just, so, I mean, so close to the action. Nobody around. It's just immense. And you can hear that. That thing's still t two miles away. I'd say, and I'm not even kidding you. That's two miles away. Oh, here we go. Just to give you an idea, try and give you an idea of the speed. And these are the, they're like Can-Ams or Polaris buggies, that type of thing. So the main, the big kind of factory teams, they've all gone through now. But still, you can hear them, they're on full gas. Whoa. 
going to be a long day. Oh, I also want to get a tan. Not just a mud tan. Yeah. I want to get mud a proper tan. on you, mate. That's yeah. brilliant. That was worth it. <laughs> what? I mean, the bikes came through this morning, and I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Right. Then the 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 really quick cars, the Audi and the Toyota Paris's. and stuff, they came through, and you're like, all oh, right, okay. The little Canams and Razors are quick, but the trucks, just unreal, aren't they? I mean, the way they cover ground, the way they just they take completely different lines to everything else because they don't need to take any lines. <laughs> they just smooth out. I mean, we were we were nearly back at the camp and then we heard the truck, we're like, oh, ran, ran all the way back. Yeah. Wow, that was the coolest thing. That's so cool. So we've arrived at the finish area where the podium is and I thought I would take a run down all of the Jeeps that have been ferrying us around the last couple of days. This is a local Jeep owners club, massive thanks to all the guys, they've been brilliant and some of these are super modified, they look absolutely wicked, a lot of them have got decats on them, they've all got really mega off-roading kit, big winches on the front, bull bars, massive high lift jacks, I do love a Jeep but absolutely mega. They're most, they're, I think they're pretty much all Wranglers. We've got Rubicon, Safaris, we've got one Jeep Gladiator. It's really, really cool. So the next thing we're gonna do is head on into the main area. It was so cool driving over here because we actually had a couple of the Dakar buggies, the little sort of uh, Can-Am buggies come past. So very, very cool. But that, that's a lineup of Jeeps. Oh man, the atmosphere here is amazing. You've got all the cars lined up here. And over here, we've got the Audi. Let's go over there and have a look. So cool. Try not to get run over. There it is. Absolutely amazing. So cool. Just to get so close to the cars. Cool for school. <laughs> Take a look inside here while we can. It's so cramped and so tight in here. The guys came second on the stage today but it really is, there's just no space in there at all down in the pedal box. It's immensely tight. Wowzers, what a thing, it's great to see it. Having seen it on the, in the stage, being worked on by the mechanics last night to see it with all the bodywork on, so cool. So this is it, two weeks of racing has all led to this, the final hurrah for all the teams they bring their cars up onto the podiums they get their medals and we give them a good cheer the next on the podium is the rsq e-tron it's literally just over there so let's wait for watching go up and get his medal yeah. Yeah. 
هذه المشاركة الثالثة في رالي دكار منذ العام 2021 لماتياس اكستروم انهى نسخة العام الماضي في المركز التاسع في الترتيب العام النهائي لفئة مشاركة